This video is sponsored by .us, the web address for everyone with a dream, idea, or business made for the USA. Hey, it's Chris. Today we're gonna do something a little bit different. Obviously, change of scenery here. What are we doing? Well, we're gonna take a look at one of my all-time favorite Mac apps. And this is gonna be a game changer for some people, I think, because they've just written it off and everything that it can do. And that app is Chrome. More specifically, though, Chromium, which is the underlying guts of what Chrome itself runs on. Now, Chrome is Google's browser, and as a Mac person who's super deep into the Mac ecosystem and the Apple ecosystem, you would think that I would use Safari. And trust me, I would rather use Safari for stuff. It's just that Safari has no extensions, and Chrome has a million extensions. And a bunch of them I rely on for my business and for getting things done. So today, I wanna talk to you about uh, some of the ones that I use already, and then also together discover a few new favorites, uh, which I think you guys are gonna like. Now look, I get it. Chrome, it's a resource hog, and it drains your battery, and it doesn't have uh, Safari or Apple's focus on privacy. So what am I doing with Chrome? Well, I have to have these extensions, and so while I'm at it, what I try to do is make my Chromium experience as Apple-like or Safari-like as possible. And how do I do that? Step number one is to download the Brave browser, which runs on Chromium, and it gives me a privacy-first, privacy-focused web browsing experience, and it speeds things up compared to Chrome as well. I so wish that I could do Chrome extensions on my iPad, on my iPad Pro specifically. That's one of the main things still missing for me that's keeping me tethered to a Mac in some ways. Just, I keep finding little things, and that's one of them. So. I'm gonna dive in here, you guys are gonna come with me. The first thing we're gonna do is come over here and grab the Brave browser. Why am I wearing AirPods, you ask? It's simple, I forgot to take them out. I was listening to my pre-video shooting warm-up music playlist, and they stayed in, so they're here for the whole video. All right, Brave, drag it to applications. Now, I have Magnet installed, and watch this. I love this shortcut. Just control, option, and what? Enter, return, yep and full screen. Magnet is the best. By the way, let us let me switch over to Chrome here real quick so you can see. I've got all of my uh, favorites, just the icons. I delete the descriptions so I can fit more uh, on my favorites bar. And maybe that's something you can try, you could use. I find that much better. All right, so I got to load it up. The first thing I'm going to grab is 1Password because that's my password manager and that's crucial for your web browser. Oh look, they have one just for Brave here even though you probably could just run the Chrome one. Well, I'm just gonna grab the Brave one then. Okay, the second thing I'm gonna grab is Bitly. I can't make it without Bitly because I often share a lot of links and I need them shortened. Although I quit paying for my own personalized short link because they wanted a ridiculous amount of money. Add extension and look, I'm on the Chrome uh, app store here and already I can see that Brave is blocking some stuff. Bitly, 1Password, the next thing I'm gonna get is Genius Link. Now if you're a business person, you do any kind of online business stuff, Genius Link is gonna be crucial, critical for sharing affiliate stuff. Of course, if you're a YouTuber or a content creator like me, then a portion of your revenue probably comes from sharing affiliate links. And then the last thing that I'm gonna grab before we dive in and start discovering some new Chrome extensions is reader mode, because I missed that from Safari. Today's sponsor is .us, the official top level domain of the United States. It's the web address for everyone with a dream, idea, or business made for the USA. Personally, I just snagged tekk.us, which will be turning into a place where you'll be able to see all the content that I've made recently in one convenient spot, whether it's the latest video or the latest podcast episode or my other projects like Apple Hype. T-E-K-K.us, tech.us, that's really easy to tell people and they're not gonna forget it. It's the perfect illustration of why .us makes your domain name so great. It's really memorable, it's nice and short, and it's distinctive, it's unique. If you're looking for a domain that's uniquely you, then look no further than .us. It doesn't matter who you are or where you came from. .us welcomes businesses based inside and outside the USA. So make your dream, whatever it may be, a reality and pick out your own .us domain using the link in the description. Okay, now with those out of the way, that's my basic setup and it's time to dig into some new Chrome extensions. And I found these earlier today and I can't wait to actually try them out. 
this is how excited I get about just Chrome extensions, right? <laughs> if you're ever like depressed or something, you know you can come on this channel and see somebody excited about something, even if it's a small thing. So the deal with Toby is that it says it's better than bookmarks. And this appeals to me because I don't like any of the bookmarking systems I've ever come across before, but there's a lot of stuff that I wanna save and organize. Okay, so the reason this looks cool is because it's not just a row of tabs, it's not just a row of favorites, it's not just a list, but you can group stuff and organize it better. Of course, what would a bookmark manager be? I don't know what this is exactly like, so I'm gonna have to add it, and oh, we gotta create an account. You have to invite friends to unlock the dark theme. I uh, hope this wasn't a mistake. Read the terms of service. Nope, but I'll say that I did. <laughs> I'll agree, right? That's probably terrible, but who has the time? Privacy policy, yes, I read that too. All right, so here I am. I can make collections. Now this is interesting. It's showing me uh, the tabs that I already have open and then I can save that session. Ooh, this is gonna be awesome. So, okay, let's see how this goes. Uh, Applehype.com, cause that's something that I edit every day. And then let's go to Squarespace also, cause then I would use Squarespace to uh, work with Apple Hype. Let's open up Amazon Product Hunt. I'm just throwing out some random stuff here that might be useful. Let's see, Uncrate. They got some cool stuff. And I'm just, I'm just throwing out some random stuff to try here. Okay, I'm gonna save this session with everything that I've got open. And saving a session will close all the tabs and create a collection of your currently open tabs. Hmm. This is super useful when you want to unclutter your browser. Okay, save. Cool. So then I could say uh, open tabs and it will open them all. Oh, this is cool. I'm really liking this. You know, I needed something like this. I have all these different projects that I work on and like web flows, workflows on the web. And yeah, it, this is going to save me a lot of time, I think, to just organize them all and and have them ready. This is great. This is kind of like, was it, what was it called? One switch or workspace? I think it was called workspaces, the Mac app that kind of lets you flip open different apps that you're gonna use for a certain project and then close them and then open other ones, depending on what you're doing. This is like that, but for Chrome, for your browser. This is really cool. All of my Apple sites and I should add some more. Cool, oh, and then as I dragged them over, it actually closed each tab. And so that's very cool too. Now they're just ready to go. Okay, this is a huge time saver. Man, so you could organize all kinds of stuff. All right, here's the next thing I wanna check out. It's called OneTab, not the coolest website I've ever seen, but what this one is supposed to do is help you beat all of that bloated uh, memory usage. You remember Jonathan's recent video with all the Chrome tabs? To beat that, speed up your browsing by 95% by putting all of your open tabs into a list. And then from there, you can reopen them as needed. All right, so the next thing we have to do is open a bunch of tabs and see how this works. And okay, so we got a few. We got one, two, three, or five. So let's give this a try, see what it does. Boom, one tab, it closed all the tabs, and now I've got my tabs right here. One tab doesn't take over your new tab. So that's nice, this is pretty cool. Um, you could load this up with a million things and just have them all for reference right here. Oh, and then you can export your list. That's pretty cool. All right, now here's one for everybody in quarantine right now. It's called Netflix Party. And what it does is let you watch Netflix with your friends or your family, right? Kind of stay connected. So it's like you can't have people over, but maybe you still want to hang out. And so you can sync the movie up so that it plays or whatever the show at exactly the same time so you guys can actually experience it at the same time even if you can't experience it in the same room. So you install it, then you open a video on Netflix, then you create your party, and once you've created that party, then you can share your party URL to whoever you want to invite to participate. Already I've thought to myself, I don't know what I would be doing without FaceTime, right? And staying connected with family and stuff, but this kind of takes that to a whole other level because there's only so much you can talk about right, or do with FaceTime. But this is another way to do something with people uh, without just having to talk, you know? And the cool thing is, is that it, it works right on Netflix. So you don't have to install anything else crazy. It's just go to Netflix like you normally would and party. All right, the next thing I wanna check out is something called Weva. Weva is a research tool. And so I'm not like an academic person, right? At the moment, I'm not in school, I'm not teaching a class or something, so I'm not writing a thesis, but 
I do make a lot of content and I do have to do a lot of research for that content. The main way that I've been doing that for a long time is to use something like Pocket or Instapaper, switch out between the two every now and then, uh, the premium versions, highlight, and then do stuff with those highlights uh, as I discover useful and interesting snippets of things. So I found Weva and I think that it could help me take that to the next level and I'm excited to check it out. There's actually uh, a desktop app too, but we're gonna check out the Chrome extension right now. Maybe I need to use both. So you can highlight PDFs and websites. What I like is that it looks like you can use a bunch of different colors and stuff, it's not just yellow. And then to be able to annotate, make notes, that's something that you can do in Instapaper, it's not something that you can do in Pocket. And so maybe this is gonna be the best of all worlds. We'll see. Oh, this email is in use. I think I have already signed up for this at some point. Uh, all right, better get a resend. All right, so we've installed. I'm gonna check out this article on The Verge about Apple redesigning the iPhone this year. What's cool about this, what I like, is that you can come in here and just actually start highlighting the actual article. You don't have to save it to something first. You don't have to save it to Weva or to Pocket or to Instapaper. This is really cool, let's see. Let me just highlight a few things here in different colors so we can see what it looks like. Then you can click on it and you can add a note, All right? So then you can go back to the dashboard and see it, see your highlights, see the colors, see the notes, and then it shows you um, the actual web page right next to it. You can jump to things. This is very cool. And then you can create folders of stuff. So absolutely, I can see how this would be super beneficial if you're doing research for even just a project or something as huge and as big as like an academic research paper. All right, the next thing I wanna check out is called Throttle, and this is pretty cool. This helps you prevent getting a lot of spam, so, or maybe any spam. If you are just overrun with spam, this is gonna be a really cool solution for you. So this is a service too that has a Chrome extension and it gives you airtight control over who can email you. And the cool thing is, with the Chrome extension, when you go to a website and there's a sign up form, this adds a button where you can provide a one-time email address. But, but here's the cool thing, like, so you can revoke access to your inbox at any time. Just effectively cut them off, anybody from then emailing you, uh, you can throttle them with this extension and service. So this is pretty cool for privacy-minded people or people who just wanna cut down on spam. All right, I think that's gonna wrap it up for this video. I found some great stuff today and I hope you guys did too. Let me know what's your favorite thing down below and let me know what you think of Brave versus Chrome versus Safari. Uh, that's an interesting topic and I'd like to get you guys' feedback. Don't forget, you can check out Apple Hype uh, every day, Monday through Friday at 11 a.m. Eastern. We post the three things that matter from the world of Apple, uh, an app suggestion, an accessory suggestion, and the Apple news headline that you should care about for that day. You can scan it in under 15 seconds. Check that out. Check out the After Party. Uh, that's our podcast. It's free. It's cool. It's growing. So come join the party. Uh, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Later.